I did a step-by-step -step build video of the circuit you see here in a previous video and now we're going to actually look at the voltages involved so this is basically a square wave generator it alternates right now the output is low now the output is high and as you can see the voltage isn't really changing we have a resistor to set the current based on the voltage because once the LED is on it's a certain brightness the blue LEDs are just naturally a lot brighter from uh, what I noticed but in any case what we have is this circuit here for this op amp this op amp is just splitting the rail so we have a positive 9 volts at the uh, red rail there a negative 9 volts at the blue rail and that's in relationship to ground which is at 0 volts that's both points where that jumper connects and then both points where that jumper connects so of course this video is about measuring the voltages we have the multimeter here set to measure voltage and we will take a look at those readings so I have a bench power supply providing 18 volts to the rails which we can see there 18 volts and now we will go to the output of this 741 op amp and I'll put the black probe there because now that is our zero volt reference point you can see the red rail we have 9 volts and the uh, blue rail we have negative 9 volts and the blue rail on that side is connected to the blue rail on that side with that jumper the red rail is connected to the red rail with uh, that jumper so now we have a couple voltages that we're dealing with so one goes to the non inverting input that's actually how we set the voltage for the output but it does change we'll look at that coming up and the op amp is going to compare it's a comparator in the circuit the voltage at the non inverting input versus the one at the inverting input so when the output is high it will either be high or low it's going to be we'll take this measurement coming up about 7.5 volts positive so not quite to the positive rail of 9 volts but pretty close if you need an op amp that goes to the rail you'll have to look for one but for this particular video I'm using the TL061 and in any case we have a resistor that comes to the non inverting pin 1 kilo ohm resistor and a much larger value resistor 8.2 kilo ohms these are the ones I picked you can switch those you'll just have a different voltage there the circuit will work basically the same though but in any case we have more voltage going to the zero volt reference point so there's uh, 7.5 positive volts across these two resistors and based on the resistance on each side we have since this is a lower value here towards the positive side almost that same voltage but a little bit lower positive 6.5 now we go over here and the other half of the time the output is low so that's going to be about negative 8 volts a little bit closer to the negative rail than the uh, positive rail was able to get to but again we have the resistor there so now there's a negative voltage across the 1 kilo ohm resistor coming to the non-inverting input and then a larger resistor going to ground zero volt reference point so it's a negative voltage we're going from negative 8 to 0 and the smaller value resistor is towards the output here which is negative and so we're gonna have somewhat close to that voltage at the non inverting input so now there's probably all kinds of formulas to figure that out but I just used the multimeter here so I'll put this to the ground rail try not to accidentally connect it to the uh, positive rail there and we will come to the output and there you can see negative eight and then there you can see positive about seven and a half so it's not exact but it is pretty close and now we will go to the output here we will put actually let's put the black probe there and we will come to the 
non-inverting pin, which is pin three. So second pin up down there. We can touch either resistor, and there you can see we have negative eight, and then up here we actually have nine at uh, that point right there. But it's supposed to be in relationship to ground. So let's go up here and uh, take the measurement there. So now we can see we got uh, about six and a half positive and about seven negative right there. So that is how the we set the voltage for the op amp. And there's also now a changing voltage on the a constantly changing, not just flipping back and forth, but a constantly moving voltage at the inverting input. And so the other voltage point that we need to know about is the inverting pin. So when the output goes high, because as we saw before, we're dealing with uh, negative seven volts and positive 6.5 volts. And so the output goes high, it sets the non-inverting input to 6.5 volts that means that this capacitor has just hit negative 7 volts so the output goes high and the point where this voltage is is actually right here where the non-inverting pin is and so it's negative 7 volts but we have positive 7.5 volts there other side of the capacitor is zero so it needs to move this point from negative 7 to positive 6.5 and in this particular circuit, I am using a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. And uh, so that's half of what is setting how long it takes for the LEDs to flash back and forth and for the output to go high to low. And so since it's a small value capacitor, to go this slow so that we can see the movement, I have a 1.5 million ohm resistor. And actually this value of resistance makes it a bit harder to measure this so we will actually be using a bigger capacitor coming up and smaller resistor but in any case when the output turns high that means the capacitor is at negative 7 volts and so it starts charging up so we get to 0 and then up to 6.5 volts and then when we hit 6.5 volts all of a sudden the voltage will be higher at the inverting pin then the non-inverting pin, as soon as it gets just a tad bit higher, then the output changes states. And we get negative eight volts. So the output, since this is wired as a comparator, just gets as close to the rail as it can, which appears to be eight volts when we have a negative nine volt power supply. And so now it's negative. This point of the circuit is positive 6.5, so it starts moving the other direction the voltage at this point goes down to zero and then keeps dropping down to negative seven because we have a negative voltage coming there and again the resistor is going to set how fast the current goes and the capacitor is going to determine how long that current takes to change its voltage but uh, in any case we hit uh, this milestone and then negative seven volts and then it jumps back to putting the output positive, the voltage divider sets the non-inverting input to 6.5 volts, and the capacitor has to make its way. And that's how it flips back and forth. So let's do the best we can to measure that with the meter now. So we're gonna measure the voltage across the capacitor. So one side of the capacitor comes to our zero volt reference point, and then the other side goes directly to the inverting pin. And unfortunately, it seems to keep there we go keep uh, from hitting the voltage points because it just the resistance through the meter is low enough where apparently it keeps the capacitor from getting to the full uh, positive and negative charge that it needs so what we're gonna do I'm gonna yank one of the uh, power jumpers out coming from the bench power supply and then swap out the resistor with one about a third of the resistance so this is a 470 kilo ohm resistor and we're going to see that the LEDs flash about three times faster and uh, so now we won't interrupt the uh, circuit 
near as much at least anyways uh, but it's a lot harder to read the voltages which is why you need an oscilloscope that can start measuring voltages at uh, this slow speed. Mine tend to need to have it going faster to take measurements. But in any case, what we can do is just go to a larger capacitor. So this capacitor, I know you won't be able to read it, but it's point or 4.7 microfarad, where this is 0.47 microfarad, so this has 10 times the capacitance. Now, this is electrolytic though. This side needs to be charged more positive than that side and there's a gray dash on the side that needs to be more negative so this is polarized and so instead of going to ground we're just going to go to the negative rail that's the most negative part of the circuit no matter what happens it can't get more positive so we will just attach it to this jumper which goes to the inverting pin right there and I can leave this value resistor here it's just gonna flash about 10 times as slow as it did with the other capacitor so it is really slow let's see when it flips back there we go finally flip back so that's a little too slow that's the 470 thousand uh, ohm resistor but uh, you know what let's just run with it and so now I got the multimeter ready by the way we have the uh, resistor 470 K now come in there over to this point that is where the jumper is up here and it comes down to the inverting input pin number two second pin down and then we got the capacitor there so now we will take a voltage measurement at that point and with this larger value capacitor and actually we want to go to ground so we can either go to this jumper or to this jumper or any of the components that go to the uh, ground rail and we will measure the voltage of the capacitor in relationship to ground and there we go it looks like it got to six and a half and so when we get to a negative seven there we go it changed states and now it should be positive six and a half and so there we can see it flipping back and forth and the multimeter I think is kind of messing with it a little bit but you can see those voltages there and now I swapped out the auto ranging meter for one where we set a range of voltages so it's set to measure 20 volts or less it should be more stable there when we get to six and a half we should see the output flip and it just flipped and now when it gets to a negative seven we should see that it flips back and there we go it uh, did so multimeter is not perfect for measuring changing voltages but you get a pretty good idea you got to take into account how the meter is going to affect the circuit and the readings too but uh, in any case hopefully you still enjoyed this video thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one